This conference will now be recorded. Hi, my name is Jillian Drew, and I'm a health educator at Greene County Public Health. And today I have Dr. Don Brandon with us, and he's our epidemiologist. So thank you so much for joining us today and answering a couple of these questions. I'm glad to be here. Great, so we're just gonna jump right in. So Dr. Brandon, what is community spread? Well, typically we find specific cases that are related to certain places of exposure like long-term care facilities, healthcare associated facilities, or, or other specific contacts of known cases. If there's no such sort of direction during the investigation, we usually assign those to community spread. That means the, the exposure could have happened anywhere in the general community. And this is especially true of people who don't have any known risk factors for COVID-19 in particular. And that leads us into our next question. So what does science say about, the, about why some individuals get sicker with COVID-19 while others can be infected but asymptomatic? Some people, uh, we've seen less than 6% of uh, young people less than 18 come down with COVID-19 in Greene County. And however, a lot of our cases, the median age is over 45 years of age. And we have had a death at age 50, which is tragic and young um, uh, for any death. So it certainly looks like older people are at more at risk. And especially those people who are experiencing comorbidities like hypertension, chronic lung disease, and immune system disorders. We have had some deaths of people on chemotherapy, for instance, they've had their immune system knocked out. They're uh, especially vulnerable to viruses. Okay. So what can individuals do to reduce their risk of getting COVID-19? One thing is to wear a face mask while you're out in public. That will not only help you from getting exposed, it'll also help you if you are carrying the virus yourself from spreading it to others that are more vulnerable, especially those people that have those conditions that we just spoke about. Okay. So with the warmer weather coming, um, I know that some parks and pools are starting to reopen. So how risky are parks and pools? during this well, time? Uh, we usually don't see too many viral, uh, respiratory viral events happening at pools, but one of the things you can do, like uh, you tried to allude to before about maybe wearing a face mask, but you really can't do that while you're in the water. But uh, before you go to the pool, you can wash your hands, uh, just like you would if you were anywhere, especially before you eat or before you serve food or prepare food. And if you see somebody who's sick, stay six feet away from them. Uh, the, uh, if you're really concerned about being around a lot of people, you probably shouldn't go to swim in a pool, especially if you have conditions of like uh, runny nose, we call that rhinorrhea. Uh, if you have conjunctivitis or redness of the eyes, if you have a cough, just stay home and, 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 and let other people enjoy the pool that are healthy. The, what some of the more viral Ill illnesses that are caused at pools are usually from uh, diarrheal illnesses. Unfortunately, we do see diarrhea with coronavirus, but we don't think it's easily spread in a chlorine-induced environment. So if the if the pool smells musty or or doesn't have enough chlorine in it, that's a good sign probably not to swim in that pool. Great. So looking out for the chlorine levels and just watching our environments, um, the six feet apart from each other, uh, and wearing face masks and hand washing. Those are all really great tips. So um, thank you so much for taking the time today to uh, answer these really important questions. I know that we have a lot of these coming in all the time. So this is gonna be really, really helpful. So thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome, Al. Take care and stay Thanks. healthy. Wash your hands. Yes. Bye.